You know, learning more about the Castor Semenya case and how there is a, potentially an over-representation of intersex individuals with increased testosterone conditions in women's sports, particularly in running, got me kind of thinking, is this a new thing? Or has it always been there and we just simply never been able to properly measure it? We have always taken for granted the gender gap in sports, particularly in things like running and weightlifting. But what if the few women who rose out of the ashes to reach the pinnacle of human achievement in these categories and outshine all the other participants were actually men? Meaning that whether or not they were born with a vagina or what society has attributed to be distinctly female characteristics but that their overall anatomy and biology is more male than female. <clears throat> what would that say about sex as a gradient? And what would that say about the gender divide and competitions overall? Think of an icon in women's history that was characteristically strong, a warrior, a titan, standing on par with men. Now, imagine she was intersex. More male than female. Does that change your opinion of this person and of what and a woman's place in society? The more we sequester genetic freaks, the greater the anomalies we attract. So are we telling someone like Castor Semenya, hey, you are too good, so we need to bring you down. It's like telling the gifted kid in a class, in a normal intercity classroom, you're too smart, you need to be stupider so that all the other kids can have a chance. Rather than say, you know what? You should go in the gifted program with other people that are going to be able to push you and you can learn and better um, hone your talents. In any typical gifted classroom or at the university level, there will probably be a higher percentage of people on the autism spectrum than in the normal school population, particularly kids what in the 90s we would call high functioning. The entertainment industry is teeming with mental health conditions and addictions. Nature and nurture intertwine in ways that we could not possibly imagine. These are the people who are most creative and most driven, but they are also the ones to most crack under the pressure. They are the ones most likely to have a tendency towards alcoholism and other forms of substance abuse. Is this a coincidence? Why might this be? The case of a person like Castor is quite interesting. Someone who grew up in rural South Africa, running barefoot on the streets in gravel roads, rises to be an Olympic star, and she happens to be intersex. I don't think this is a coincidence at all. All systems are rigged towards a certain kind of individual. Perhaps women's sports is rigged towards people like her. So rather than squash this kind of competition, Maybe we ought to let it shine because we know that people like her have been here before and they will continue to be there again.